Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. Right, today we're going to do a bit of tech talk. And when I say tech talk, I'm going to be showing you how to set up the vernier timing on this Mini. So here we have the Mini guys. As you can see, a lot of progress has been made. The block has all been pretty much built up now. So we've got the, the full balance crank assembly in the block. We've got the rods that have all been sized and balanced inside there with the new pistons on. We've made sure that the piston um, protrusion or level is as it should be, which is level with the surface of this block, which has been faced. Obviously it's been bored and all the clearances are right as they should be. You've got the camshaft, the new uprated camshaft that runs in the block, okay, down here. And you've got the cylinder head down here that's all been reconditioned. Um, this was unleaded anyway, but we've got the uprated valve springs. We've got the rocker, new rocker shaft, and we've got the, the rockers that have all been reconditioned. So we've blasted these, we've faced the pads underneath and um, re-oiled it all. The bushes are all perfect, so that's all good to go. Got the camshaft that runs in the block um, with a series of usually three or five bushes in there. And the camshaft is driven either off through a belt or a chain, chain in this case, off the crankshaft. And the pulley is obviously like it is on normal camshafts. It's twice as big as the pulley down on the crankshaft. So to every two revolutions of the crank is one revolution of the camshaft. So on a pushrod engine, you've got the difference between a pushrod engine and an overhead cam is you've got the camshaft that runs in the block and the cam has got on top of the camshaft, you've got followers and they slide uh, up and down in the, in the block obviously follow the lobe of the camshaft. They then in turn push these push rods. They locate nicely in the top of the follower inside the block. And once the head is bolted on, the bottom of these followers have a ball, adjustable ball screw, which locates in there. So when the cam goes up, it pushes up the push rod, which then pushes up the follower and pushes down the valve and spring. So that's how that works as opposed to a camshaft over the top, um, overhead camshaft, which will have a, a bucket over the top or a rocker, the same as this. And the camshaft either runs above the cylinder head, sort of turning and pushing the, the rocker like that, or just directly over the valves where it just, the lobe just pushes down the valve and spring. Okay, so this one here is obviously a push rod engine. So we've got the camshaft that runs in the block. And as you can see on the front of here, we've got a nice fancy vernier pulley. Now the idea of a vernier pulley as opposed to a standard pulley that has no adjustment is, especially with a, an uprated cam that may have you know, be designed to run at a different angle. Um, you can fine tune this to get the, uh, you know, the exact full lift of the camshaft at the angle that they, they recommend. So in this case, they reckon full lift on the inlet and the exhaust on this is 109 degrees. Okay, so what I'm gonna show you is how to, first of all, the first stage of setting up a, a vernier pulley is to find the center of the dead zone on TDC of the of piston number one. The TDC is top dead center. If you imagine very top of the, the lift of the crank, and it's the same on the cam, to be honest with you, you have a dead zone. So what that, what that dead zone is, so if I turn this crank all the way around, on the front of here, we've got an angle gauge. So this will show you 360 degrees, every little angle, every degree that the crankshaft is turning. And what I normally do is set up a marker. So this, in this case, we've got a, and a welding rod actually that I'll put a point on there. And you can bolt that to anything on the block. And that just shows you, it's an indicator of where you are on the crank. So if we continue to turn this round and you see the piston coming up to the top, so 
if we get to nearly the the top now you notice two three four maybe degrees there's a point to which the piston comes to a dead spot on its way up where it stops to when it drops back down now what the idea is is we need to find the center of that dead spot so what i do is i set a dti gauge at tdc so probably a bit lower than tdc you see there so you can see when the piston's coming up on the gauge now what i do is if we just turn this all the way around again as i say i do apologize guys if this is um this seems long-winded i'm not the best teacher in the world but um i do hope that you'll sort of get the gist of this by the time i've finished so what i do is if we watch this gauge until the gauge nearly stops okay and what you look what you want to do is get it so it nearly stops which is about there that's where the gauge is stopping and if we turn this round to zero so that's sort of roughly where it's roughly the top you know top dead center and what I normally do is if we back that gauge off about sort of five thou each one of these little markers is a thousandth of an inch so if we knock that down about a thou uh, sorry five thou then bring the crankshaft back round until it reaches the zero which is just before TDC then I mark TDC with the with the pointer okay so if we just go all the way around right so what I do is just before it gets to TDC I'll get it to the zero so there bang on the zero so that is about roughly five thousand just before TDC if I set this marker to the zero any time today would be nice once I go through to TDC on this gauge then back round to zero moving the crank in clockwise position okay I know that right in the center of that dead zone of TDC is going to be halfway on what that that has moved on that gauge so if we move that now so very slowly until it gets back down to the zero I'm trying to do this one-handed whilst holding the camera Okay, that's dead on the zero again. And you can see that that counter has moved eight degrees. So we know the center of that dead zone is gonna be four degrees that way. So if we move that pointer four degrees, so there okay back to four and we know when we come back round to and put that on put that on TDC we know that that is true TDC so that there is right in the center of that dead zone so that was the easy bit believe it or not <laughs> so that's the first stage of doing the the vernier setup now what we do is we need to find the dead center of the top of the lobe on say the inlet um, and they give in the book on this as i said before 109 degrees so after tdc will be top lift on the inlet. If we turn this crank to 109 degrees, 
I'm going to try and do this. Try and do this one handed, not easy. So, that there, 190 degrees after TDC, should be full lift on the inlet lobe. So that's right in the center of the lobe. That'll be right in the center of the dead spot. Same as what we did on the crankshaft. You've got timing marks on this pulley to get it roughly there. I mean, this one we have already done. So what you do is you put the cylinder head on, bolt it down, and obviously with the push rods in, and then we set a DTI. So this would be exhaust valve. Sorry, that's exhaust, not inlet. I'm telling lies but it's 109 degrees on the exhaust anyway. Exhaust would be um, 109 degrees before top dead center. So if we turn this round here to 109 degrees, we set a DTI on the top of this rocker that sits obviously on top of this push rod. And we are looking to, when we turn the crankshaft to its 109 degrees, we can fine adjust it by undoing these bolts and we can fine adjust the pulley to get it to, to once we've found the center of the dwell on the camshaft, we can fine tune it. So the center of the dwell on the camshaft from the DTI gauge on the top of the rocker gives us 109 degrees on the crankshaft. You're probably thinking, mate, you need to go to school to be able to learn how to teach but as i said i ain't a teacher i just know how to do it and i suppose i take it for granted really um but trying to explain these things is really not easy once you've done it you tighten all these up then we always turn it through 360 degrees just to check and um, as i say we've done this one already and it's uh we're all sort of set to put the cylinder head on Sorry if that's not a very good explanation, guys. No doubt you will, you will chuck me a few comments telling me how hopeless I am, but <laughs> as I say, it's not very easy. So yeah, the, the mini engine's nearly there. Um, just got a few more bits here to put on. As I say, we've got the, the stud and nut kit, ARP stud and nut kit there. Um, so we'll put a little bit more of a torque on there. Uh, the front plate goes on. And away we go. Well, thanks ever so much for watching, guys. We shall probably see you tomorrow for another video, hopefully. If not, it be Thursday. But, um, yeah, thanks very much for watching. And I'll uh, see you soon. Cheers, guys.